This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to this episode of Hack 5. My name is Shannon Morse and this is your weekly dose of Technolest. And as you can see, unfortunately, Darren is not here this week, but maybe we'll see him later on in this episode along with some awesome feedback from you guys. But first off, I wanted to thank Greg again for joining me. Greg with his awesome blinged out blingatron. I love his necklace, don't you? Looks good on him. And I wanted to go ahead and jump right into my segment for this week. Now, you guys remember last week I checked out Kali Lewis. Uh, I mean, Kali Linux. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. And this is the newest refresh of Backtrack. It's pretty cool. It feature, features hundreds of uh, pen testing tools for hobbyists and for experts. Well, this week I'm checking out Remnux, which is a Linux distro specifically made for reverse engineering malware. Now, as you already know, malware is basically malicious software that can be hidden in a file or source in the form of a code, scripts, active content, or other software. So generally, malware is hostile and it's made to disrupt or collect sensitive information or change a computer in some kind of way. Malware can be scripted into the backbone of a PDF file. It can be in JavaScript or Flash or other sources as well. Now, the distro Remnux hopes to make reverse engineering easier for the masses, and it brings us pre-installed tools and software specifically for this task. Now, you may have already heard of Remnux. It's been around since, like, early 2010, so, you know, almost three years already. But it was recently updated to version 4 in April of 2013. Hooray! Now, Remnux is best used as an ISO image or a virtual appliance. And this can be useful to run in a virtual machine, or it can be used to analyze malware in that isolated environment so that you don't end up harming, well, your laptop or your usual workspace. It's also an Ubuntu-based distro, so it's really easy to use, and it runs on a nice little desktop environment. Now, to run Remnux, I'm using an ISO image for mine, and just so you guys know, your username, whenever you get into it, your user is Remnux, and the password is malware, in case you end up uh, getting out of your username for any reason, or you need to use sudo, for example. So, when you log in, this is your main page, you'll automatically get a terminal up here. You won't be connected to any sort of wireless networks until you choose to, and you got the nice little background. Remnux, ta-da! Now, a couple of things to keep in mind about this. It's made specific specifically for malware analysis, so the tools that are in here might not be the same tools that you would see in, for example, Kali Linux. So, if I go down here in the GUI, you'll notice I have things from accessories, graphics, internet, I have office stuff, other things, there's tons of things in here, programming, sound and video, system tools, and wine. So when you look through this, you'll think, okay, well, there's not very many applications to choose from. But turns out, many of the tools that you might want to use for the terminal are not included in the GUI list. So you'll actually have to go into the GUI or go into the terminal and find those. So to give you a couple of examples of some things that are included in here, for Flash Mower, for example, there's Flasm, there's SWFT tools, uh, network activities, you can do Wireshark, of course, HoneyD. There's also JavaScript analysis like Firefox, Firebug, Quick Java, and for web malware, you can also use the Firefox user agents, uh, switcher extensions. Tiny HTTPD is also included. Uh, they also have tools for shell code, for suspicious executables like UPX, uh, Packer ID, Byte Hist, all sorts of different ones. And then for malicious documents like PDF documents that might have malware installed, they have Didier Stevens PDF tools, Origami Framework, etc., etc. Also for memory forensics, there's Volatility Framework, Bulk Extractor, there's even RSA Key Finder and AES Key Finder. Now, Lots of these aren't found, again, in the graphical interface. You'll have to go into the command line to find those. So you will need to check their cheat sheet to verify if something is included for sure. And if you're wondering what that cheat sheet looks like, they have this nice little tool that's already installed, a PDF guide, which shows you usage tips for malware analysis on Linux. And they go through 
not only just getting started, but examining malicious websites. They also have a lot of information on here for document files and other files as well. So if I click on one of these, like I'll go to PDF ID. So this will automatically pull up where you can find all sorts of information about how to use PDF ID, for example. And I'll go ahead and close this. They also have some general commands for use with Remnux, which you probably already know how to do most of these because they're pretty much the normal things that you'll find in Ubuntu uh, operating systems. Also, they have a bunch of really cool aliases as well. So if you go into bash aliases, you'll find a whole bunch that are already pre-made for you uh, for different commands that you may want to use. Now, last but not least, if you go to their website, go ahead and close that. I'll just type in Remnux, since I don't have it bookmarked. So if you go to your, the website, you'll notice uh, Lenny Zeltzer is the man that made this. He has, let me quickly scroll down here. So if you go to his website, you'll find that he also has the cheat sheet guide on here in PDF form as well as a printable if you need it for any reason. He also has a link to a nice little webcast that they had recorded about the essentials of using Remnux. So if you have any questions about how to use Remnux or if you want further information about it, you can always check out that webcast as well. So I'd like to thank Lenny because this is not only a really easy to use uh, distro because it's based on Ubuntu, but it's also very minimalistic. So you're only going to find the software that you need to run on this, and it's going to be really quick and easy, and then you can get back to whatever you're normally doing. Of course, this is only for malware analysis, so most of that normal stuff that you normally want to do, you're not going to be finding in here. So it's not your day-to-day Linux operating system, but it is something that may become useful if you ever do find yourself needing to do any kind of an analysis of PDF files or what have you. Now, after all that, you can always go to their website and enter in any kind of feedback or bugs that you have found. He has his email address right there as well as his Twitter on his website, and he also has the webcast again. Now, I'd like to go ahead and throw it over to Darren or whatever is going on after this segment. We'll see. And we'll be right back after a quick break. Oh, hey there. I didn't even notice you come in. I, I'm just in my kitchen here trying to cook something yummy up. Really don't have much food in the fridge. You know what I do have? I've got the hookup on domain names. By the way, this is about as recursive as you're ever going to see Darren Kitchen. Yeah, maybe it's a galley. Anyway, let me tell you about these innovators. Imagine yourself an innovator, an entrepreneur. Imagine yourself a startup. Well, plenty of these guys, they're turning their dreams into realities and it's all backed by one of the coolest TLDs in the universe. It's actually the third best TLD in all of the universe. It's called the .NET. It's right there behind .com and .de and it's one of my favorite TLDs. See, if you've got a .com already, like I do with my hackacrossamerica.com or darrenkitchen.com, you can protect your online brand identity by getting that .NET. I've done the, that for both of those domains. Or if, say, the domain name that you want is already taken, well, that .NET's actually a perfect alternative than, of course, getting like a 140 character .com. That's crazy sauce. Don't do that. The only crazy sauce should be made up in here. Anyways. When I get myself .NETs, I do it over at my favorite place to shop for domain names. That's Domain.com. You guys know they've been a huge supporter of Hack5, a huge fan of yours, and they want to hook us all up. They're really a lot of fun to do business with, uh, even paint the town red with. So you can find them uh, on Twitter, at Domain.com, and uh, you can save 15% off their already affordable domain names and web hosting. All you have to use is the coupon code HAK5 at checkout and that'll get you those big savings. So don't forget, use coupon code HACK5 when you're at Domain.com's checkout, and when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Think about getting groceries, because there really isn't anything in here.
Thanks, Shannon. I am at my uh, home. I don't normally record here, but I have been here all week and will probably continue to be for another week. Uh, just to catch those up who haven't been watching my video blog, by the way, video blog. Um, I just had some surgery. I'm okay. Everything's fine. It was... Uh, oh, yeah, you need to watch the video blog and find out how you can text me during segments. Sorry, I'll mute this. And... Um, and anyway, I, I'm also really loopy, if you couldn't tell. I'm on a bunch of medication right now, so that's why I'm home. I'm recovering, but I, everything is cool. I'm going to be fine. I think I'm going to be right back on my feet in about a week, and then back to finishing the build-out on the van. Uh, but what I wanted to talk to you guys about in this segment is seeing that I'm home, and, I'm, and it's you know tax season, and I'm trying to do a bunch of catch-up work and a bunch of administrative crap that I don't want to do before I set off on the road and just go you know, happy-go-lucky hacking around the world, uh, or America, North America, Canada is included. Um, what I would like to do is talk to you guys about, uh, what is it called? Um, Google Docs. I love Google Docs. I can't lie. Like, they are so convenient. And one of the things, though, here being on my, uh, my Windows box here, because I'm doing a bunch of Photoshop, Illustrator stuff, um, is that one of the things that I notice is, uh, my habits, my workflow habits have always been, I have a thought, I need to get it down, Windows R, notepad, yada yada. And that's great up until, you know, you move machines, your hard drive crashes, however it is that you lost your file, we've been there, right? Or you can't find your file because it's in C colon backslash temp, backslash temp2, backslash temp3. Anyway, I have horrible habits when it comes to that, but I do love... Google Docs because I'm able to search them, they're in the cloud, and the yada yada with the cloud net stuff. So you guys know all about that. Uh, we've talked about ways to sync Google Docs in the past. I'm not a fan of, of uh, I keep saying Google Docs, I know it's Google Drive now, but I'm not a fan of the Google Drive client for Windows. Uh, it's really lacking, there isn't one for Linux. And I wanted to talk about some of the tools that you might use at your disposal to make Google Drive work better for you. And the first one that I found here, uh, you know, the web interface is great, but what I really want is that notepad experience. And for that, there's an awesome uh, Windows style, notepad style, uh, Google Docs or Google Drive application over at code.google.com called Knox. And Knox is really awesome because it's, it's really lightweight. Here it is right here. You see you've got a tabbed different, you know, you can have new documents to your heart's content in these different tabs. Uh, you can do the same kind of stuff you would find in WordPad. You can even change some fonts, but uh, essentially it's, it's Notepad, right? Uh, and what's beautiful about this is I can say, hello world, and when I go to save that, I can choose my folders, I can enter a destination, yada, yada. And if I'd like, I can just do file, browse Google Docs, and as you can see, it's tied in. And so I can, you know, pick up any of my docs. Of course, any of the formatting may look different um, if it's rich text. But for those basic, I want to jot something down, and I want it to be synced to the cloud, and I, you know, want a notepad++ style, kind of with tabs and whatnot. This is an awesome thing, Windows only. But uh, for those Linux users, I found an awesome thing that we should talk about. We should talk about in sync. How's your 90s boy band trivia, huh? Now, uh, let's go over to my Linux Mint VM because I've got over here uh, an awesome tool that is free in beta, free while it is in beta. InSync is a alternative to the Google Drive client for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, currently, Linux is free during the beta. Uh, it's 10 bucks after that, but uh, it seems pretty cool because it's got, you know, it allows for multiple accounts and a bunch of other features in and above the regular Google Docs one or the Google Drive uh, application. But I'm interested in the uh, the one for Linux here. And if I just come down here and download, and I'm using Cinnamon. It's a fairly basic installer, and I feel like InSync has done a lot of things right here. So let's check it out. So since I'm in a live installation, I'm going to start it up from the command prompt, which isn't normally what you would do to integrate with your shell better. But uh, basically, in sync, I didn't even end it with an ampersand. And we get this icon down here in the bottom right hand corner where we can see our in sync errors and any changes that have happened. We can go to the website, check out the folder, pause syncing, the same kind of stuff that you would find in like, you know, a share file or a Dropbox. 
But what's nice is it pops up our accounts at Google. I'm going to log into a Google account that I have here. And I will allow it access. So it's using the OAuth mechanism there. Whereas Knox, which I was not a fan of this with Knox, uh, actually asks for your Google username and password. Thankfully, if you're doing two-factor, you can set up a, you know, one-time use password. But it's just something to consider. Now we'll link this machine. I'm going to name it Minty Minty Mint because I've had a lot of pain medication, and that sounds good. All right. And with that said, now I can actually just fire up my uh, my regular file browser here and I'll see I have a new folder called in sync and really it's just a matter of going in there and you see your name and hey there there's my hello world text um, I can create uh, I can see other documents that I have like here's a uh, Google spreadsheet that I have for tech news today and if I open that up it just opens up in LibreOffice like I would expect to a native client which for many people might be what you're looking to do and I like this because if you're offline you can still access that and it handles all of that synchronization when you get back online. Um, and as you imagine, you know, it's the same thing with creating new documents. Um, you know, we can use it just as a regular file system without having to think about what's running behind it. Is it fused? Is it, you know, whatever have you. And it builds on top of some of the other stuff that Shannon's talked about in the past where we can actually use uh, ENCFS or INCFS to do encrypted file system. With this, we can use it to you know, we can put our regular encrypted volumes in it, no problem. And, and I like the idea of just uh, more synchronization goodness. So yes, that is a very loopy Darren from me to you talking about Google Docs on the Windows and the Linux with the syncing and the stuff. And I want to hear what you guys use because I am all about optimization and efficiency when it comes to whatever it is day to day. And I have had the hardest time weaning myself off just like notepad. Um, but, you know, what do you guys use? Maybe there's a, a Vi with, actually with this you wouldn't need Vi with Sync or Emacs with Sync because it's just a directory. Yes, again, very loopy Darren from me to you, feedback or the comments, and I will see you guys next week, hopefully feeling a little better. Cheers. It's now time for the Technolist photo of the week. Wayno sends us this photo. He said, if you are an MST3K fan, then you will know who Joel Hodson is. Now, you can always send your photos over to feedback at hack5.org. And Wayno, I'm a little bit jealous that you got to meet Joel. I'm kind of a fan. Oh, so cool. Next up is the trivia. Now, last week's question was, what does the program Elite Wrap do? And the answer that I was looking for is it binds Trojans to legitimate files for exploitation later. Good job on answering that one. Now this week's question is, what is the attack called Evil Twin? What does it do and what is it? Now you can answer that one over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack5 swag. Now to end it off, we have a new Google Plus community over at Hack5. You can join in on all of the conversation about future segments that we're doing and put in your input. Tell us what you think. You can also always email us at feedback at hack5.org or you can go to hack5.org slash follow for all of our social links. Find out what we're doing. Find out a little bit more about Hack Across America. And if you like what we are doing and you want to support us directly, we have plenty of cool hacker gadgets over at hackshop.com. Now don't forget, check out ThreatWire, threatwire.org for all of the details. That's our brand new show. And hack5.org slash HAA for Hack Across America information. And make sure to sign up because it's going to be a blast and we are so excited. Now with all that, hopefully Darren will be back soon and we're reminding you as always to trust your technolust. Right, Greg? Trust your technologist. <laughs>